welcome to another SVPR meetup. So, uh, first off, just gonna kick right into the presentations with um, Mark Morrison here uh, from FS Studio. And I don't know what FS Studio does, so we're gonna find out right now. Let's give a warm welcome. Just hold it a little closer. Okay, so hello. Thank you guys. <coughs> How's everybody doing this summer? You guys doing good? Are you guys working? Is everybody working or are you on vacation? Vacation. <laughs> Workation. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to do a little bit more talking with slides, don't worry about that. Um, thank you all. I really appreciate being here, and first time I'm in this, this space, it's a really awesome space, so thank you, Carl, Nana, and, and Bruce. Um, I'm Mark Morrison, and real quick background, I've done a lot of video game work, and I was at Unity for about three years, in startups, doing AR, VR. Um, today I'll use the acronym XR. I'm not really a big acronym guy, I wish we could just decide on one and keep it, but I guess we can keep evolving that. So uh, I always like to find out who's a developer, like who's in the room, who's development, business. Uh, by show of hands, how many are developers? Cool. And how many are business people? And how many are owners of businesses? Cool. So it's a nice mix. So um, I live local, and I met uh, the SVVR crew a long time ago when I was at Unity. Huge, huge kudos. I mean, I can't tell you how important it is to build community. And so. I'm here today, I'm gonna to be fairly short, although I'll take a few more minutes because I think our, our, one of our presenters is in transit or is, is not able to make it. So I'll spend a little bit of time talking about FS Studio, but I'd love to answer, uh, even ask you questions, but I won't do that now, but answer any questions. And um, let's see, I think I'll do this right. So uh, I kind of hacked together a little bit of an intro here, and I'm sure our CEO is looking for me to refine this, but. We are uh, an advanced, we're, we're actually an advanced technology studio. <clears throat> and I say advanced technology because we're out there looking for the kind of work that we do is with bigger companies, bigger projects, or subbing with bigger teams and bigger projects to solve technology problems. And when I say technology problems, I'm gonna, I'm gonna race pretty quickly through um, to some use cases and some projects that we've done. Thank you, yeah, I just wanna make sure you guys hear me. <clears throat> so, we're based at Emeryville. This is a company that was founded in 2011 by a number of developers. They all had you know, really deep backgrounds working for other companies. But that was about the time when I started getting into immersive technology, specifically AR and then VR pretty quickly. And FS Studio is, is based in Emeryville. We have a studio workshop um, on Alameda, um, which is a great place. I don't know if you guys have been up there. I haven't spent a lot of time there. <clears throat> but I went there recently and we've actually got a stage where we built some, some bigger projects, pro, uh, hardware and software. So we, like most of you out there, are independent, always looking for work. How many out, out there are looking for work today, work for higher projects? Anybody? So that's good. You guys have all got projects to work on your own. So there's a lot of us in the space now, and you'll hear about this in deeper discussions about, like, where's the work? Where's the money? And I wanted to add a little bit of value today to today's presentation, and this is where I'll take some questions. You know, where is the work? Where is the money? Because we're a fir firmly based in the work for higher spectrum. You know, we build some of our own stuff, but we leverage that thing back into clients' work. So we're really focused on a couple of uh, specific areas. And right now, coming out of our experience with IoT and embedded systems, we're really focused on XR. And XR, as we see it, is really an umbrella over a lot of the immersive technology slash connected experiences that we're getting out there in the marketplace. A lot of it is enterprise and industrial, so we as consumers and, and audience won't see that always. But that's something to think about. I would say that the majority of the work that we get and the things that we do are in the enterprise and in the industry space. They're not in the entertainment space, but we love that, we love that area as well. So um, I'm gonna kind of race through this too because I don't have a ton of time. I mean, we, we do focus on a lot of stunt work stuff. That's where we find work as well. People trying to figure out and scrap through their ideas to basically get a big check cut at their company. So we work on a lot of different um, proofs of concepts and things like that. And again, just adding a little value here for those of you who are looking for work for hire, it takes time and it takes networking, but it also does in this day and age take a little bit of trial by error and kind of 
letting people get some of your attention and your bandwidth and building your trust. For me, it's all about trust. Business is about a trusting relationship and confidence in actually getting the work and, and executing on the work. So we do a lot of the obvious stuff that you would think a company like an advanced technology group would do. Um, you know, we work on a lot of computer vision solutions, um, have a very deep history in IoT as far as IoT definition is, in terms of the embedded systems, both on the, the hardware and the software side making that work. Uh, again, I'm going to race through pretty quickly and not read things to you. We do a lot of the, the services stuff, but an, another, another piece, you know, anecdotal to, to finding work for hire, if you target yourself and kind of, if we, if we went out there and just looked for game development work, it would be difficult. There's a lot of game developers. And as you get the artwork and the production work, that's great work. We love that work, but we like to have that inside of bigger projects. And so these are some of the things that we've done. Um, and I'll, I won't read, but I'll just kind of walk you through a few of these projects where we found really good bigger partners who keep coming back for more work. And a lot of it is understanding the client. So we'll come in with LeapFrog and understand not only the products, because a lot of us have kids and we have the products, but what they're trying to accomplish by evolving what they've got. So this, was, this has been a great relationship and, and we've done a lot of work with them uh, in terms of exploring uh, new products and ways to kind of improve. It really comes down to business and marketing, kind of traction in the consumer space. So also while a lot of us are technical and focused on the technology, there's a big portion of it that comes down to, to building that trust that I talked about, kind of people understanding that you know what they're talking about, what they're dealing with. Um, porting is a huge business now. So a lot of you out there are probably in the same space where there's a great solution proprietarily in one sector, but they're trying to get that out across channel or across platforms. When I was at Unity, I was there for three years, I helped build their games business up and help create the community there and some of the processes that we still use. And the biggest value to Unity and why Unity I think is such a big success and so meaningful in our space development wise is their number one priority is all the developers out there, all of the customers. And that's something that's super old school. So I really appreciate that. Unreal does the same thing and they kind of caught on very quickly that this was part of the secret sauce for Unity. But porting for us is a, is a meaningful business and we like to do that and we like to work with other people too. By the way, we always look for talent. So if there are contractors out there, we're always looking for technical artists, we're always looking for systems folks, Linux system stuff. So, you know, feel free if you're ever wondering and looking for some work, uh, we're, we're always looking for you. Um, this is another company that probably most of you all know. Um, this is a, a pretty big toy company. They do a lot of things in, in, in our immersive technology space now, trying to get not only into the living room, but even outdoors and doing things with, uh, you know, their air hogs is what we worked on. Um, so, as you see this, you'll, you know, we've also done some work with Hasbro. We have done a lot of toy work, and that's a good place to explore as well, because it's fun to work in, you can get paid, and you can then leverage that stuff out into other kind of more real, real world applications. Uh, automotive and robotics is, is a real, you know, hot topic these days and there's a lot of problems to be solved. That's the other thing, you know. Are we, as producers and developers, solving problems? And it's kind of cliche as we talk about this a lot, but if we're not solving a problem out there that needs to be solved, it's really difficult to exist and sustain yourself as we do as, as a development shop, you know, as developers. Um, this was a really neat project that we did We've got a, ra a ride that we built on our stage up in Alameda, and it, uh, it's, it's a concept piece that was done, um, it's called Fictional Force, and it basically uses uh, a lot of the Star Wars world, and it's, it's a, a fairly uh, deep immersive experience on a, on a motion stage, and there's a lot of sensory stuff going on, but we, we worked on a Saber Battles game, and this one was fairly successful in terms of um, how, how it came out, and we work, we work with, uh, you know, with the company that we work with, we, we spent a lot of time understanding the problem they have and trying to solve that problem. <clears throat> we do a lot of work in the HCI world, um, and that's, you know, the human-computer interaction. 
There's a great presentation, if you can find it online, that Timothy West from Unity has given. I don't see her giving it that much anymore, but it's, it's kind of the allegory of the beginning of HCI as we know it. Um, and I'll date myself. Uh, I was around when we kind of reinvented the arrow, you know, the mouse and the keyboard. So starting from that point coming forward, you know, we had this real renaissance with the touch screen. I wanted to throw this out there too, because I think about it a lot. What will the future HCI be? And I don't think we even think about that now because 10 or 20 years from now, as we really have massively adopted immersive technology in the home and away from the home, you know, inside and outside, getting rid of all these friction points like light traffic and different things like the, you know, the position tracking that we're kind of getting to a critical point now being really successful and other technologies like some of our friends here from Netgear are creating that you know allows for a really real world like merging the real world and the virtual world and we can't tell the difference you know we're trying to get there and we're getting there but I think about the UX in virtual world in the next 10 years and I don't even think that we've touched on what that's going to be because there's no money in it now it would have to be somebody that can wait to make money in 10 years on it, but it's gonna be something like the mouse and keyboard was revolutionary to my experience with the computer, and then my kids' experiences now with the touch screens. Um, it's gonna be something pretty spectacular. So I just wanted to throw that out there for any math scientists that have 10 years to wait to make a bunch of money. It, you know, and it's gonna be something very, you know, matrixy, minority report-ish, and I can name a number of other movies, but I won't. Um, this was a really cool project that we did with Samsung. And obviously, sometimes we can name companies, sometimes we can't. Um, but we worked with their Arctic group, and uh, this, was a, this was, a, was a proof of concept. But it turned out to be uh, a fairly, I'm, again, I'm running through this pretty quick, because I think my time is going to come up here. i got, what, two, three more minutes? A little bit more, okay. Um, I'm, I'm getting to a point here. Z-Space, how many people have experienced Z-Space recently? Yeah, I haven't, I haven't, so I'll put my hand down. Like in the last couple of months, has anybody tried it? I'm really impressed with that platform. I started getting to know them when I was at Unity as well. And they were, you know, across the freeway, they were down at 237, and I was puzzled as to why they were focused on the education marketplace, but it was true 3D. You know, the, the space that they've created in their platform is really, really, really cool, and it's super meaningful for education. And it has evolved, and it's successful, and they're actually have made a really good business of it. And while we've done a math and a chem app for them, there are a number of others. So I do think that that's a platform, while it's proprietary, to kind of keep an eye on. And I'm actually going to contact them because I wanted to try it. I haven't done it for probably two years, and I've just heard a lot, a lot of good things about the changes in it. But again, you know, where's the money? You know, and where are we trying to find work? I think training is a really big area for us as well. We're doing a lot of work there, exploring how to make training in VR and XR a lot more meaningful and um, kind of consistent with value that people want. You know, it's one thing to stick an app on and you know cruise around in the go for a little while and go, yeah, it's, yeah, it's better than Gear VR, but oh, what's next? Um, although I do, I do give the go a lot of credit. You know, I have to give credit to these bigger companies who create platforms and opportunities for us, developers to build things on. Um, there are some really deep areas now that I won't go too, too deep into, but, but the, the, the areas of you know, neural networks, a lot of the AI uh, space that we delve in um, isn't quite on the outside of enterprise yet, but we do a lot of that work inside um, with enterprise and industry. Um, and then all of the collection of data and, you know, there's, a, there's an interesting kind of thought about data because it's this, this huge keyword, but what, what is it? What do you do with it? And, well, that's the, that is the key. You know, what you do and synthesize with the data you get, whether it's um, you know, out there ride sharing and the drivers and the riders getting stuff. But I think that um, this is an area, the more that I meet new developers in the Bay Area, probably two out of three are in data. And they're coming out of school and they're training for that in computer science, for data science. Um, you know, language, I mean, voice technology is amazing. My fifth grader locally here in Mountain View did, uh, um, had a hypothesis, it was pretty easy to prove, Alexa's the smartest voice assistant in the consumer marketplace. So we looked at everything across the board 
and he decided to not use Bixby at the time, although Bixby has now got a great program for anybody that's looking to get into voice technology and a, it's voice AI. Um, there's a beta program at Samsung now. Highly recommend you to just go in. It's like two minutes to apply. You get in, you can build, uh, I think they're called cards, but you can build some applications for them if you're looking to get some attention in the voice AI work, uh, world. I think that's a, a pretty interesting spot for us for VR as well and AR and XR. Because, you know, when we talk about human-computer interaction, the voice has been overlooked for a decade. You know, it could have been tracking all along with what you see and even, I mean, you know, Fortnite voice isn't different than what, what I did even before that with Unreal Tournament. But the voice technology that we've got now in our phones is super powerful. You know, I didn't realize, you know, you don't need to set this up on the, on the cliff to take a picture uh, of you and your family anymore. You know, you set it up there and you yell to it to take a picture. But the voice technology stuff that we're doing and the work for hire that we're doing in this space you know, is very interesting in terms of the growth. There's, there's a ton of growth there. So again, I would, not, um, I would not think that we won't include that as a component for all the projects that we do that are you know, very XR centric. Um, and you know, again, with, with voice, we've done, there's a couple projects here that we've done, I won't read through this, but um, fairly technical. Um, and natural language processing is, is, is another hot topic now too. We're seeing a lot of out of the country companies coming to the US and looking at the problem that exists with having so many different languages around the world and the inability to kind of consolidate and, and grow experiences across platforms across the world. So we did some projects recently that, that kind of exemplified what that means and, and how to deal with uh, natural language processing. Um, a couple other projects that we've done, mobile fitness, ride sharing tech. You know, Lyft and Uber are very interesting because if you scrape down the ride share component of those, the driver app, the component that actually gives the business to consumer experience could work well with, I mean, how many of us sit on the phone trying to, um, get a new appointment for doctors and dentists. So what if, you know, some of the technology that's out there, um, especially for the immersive technology space, would allow us to be always on, 24 seven, you're connected, and you can do things like practical, you know, appointment making. It's interesting because the duplex, uh, did anybody see, I'm sure everybody watched the IO, Google, voice, duplex, video demo. We won't get into that, but it's a very deep, deep, deep technology that's probably further out than we would think when we see the video. But um, that also is a, you know, a part of the um, experiences that I think we're looking to create more of in XR. A, I, you know, I like AR, VR. I don't know why we have to do XR, but okay, XR, bigger umbrella. Um, you know, we've done work with, with bigger companies, um, but I, I'll, I'll leave you all with, uh, with uh, just a quick moment if anybody has a question. I mean, I really, I feel like we have to help each other. So if there's anything that we can do or I can do to help developers out there, um, network or anything else, feel free to you know take my email. Our CEO is a real friendly guy too, super smart. Um, our team is, we like to keep our team lean and mean, but we still got about 20 base employees and then probably the same amount of contractors. We really like to work with contractors because a lot of you all don't like to be tied down to an employment agreement. Um, but we like to keep domain experts in every area. So if you feel like there's something that you want to do and you're not able to do it or find work, please contact us. Because um, I think Tim is a fabulous guy. And again, with the trust thing, it kind of all comes down to trust. So, and I, I really trust this team. We execute really well on stuff. So are there any questions? And then I'll get, uh, get off the stage. Any questions, anybody? Yeah, didn't you guys do something with like a platform? Yeah. Like a Thing. Yeah, so um, fictional fictional force is the ride that we have. I'll call it a ride, and it's in it's on the stage in Alameda, and it's uh, it's essentially an X-wing fighter game where you're sitting on the platform and it's moving, and there's a fair amount of haptics and you know kind of sensory stuff happening, sound, rumble, movement, um, and this is really to showcase you know what you can do when you put everything together and really kind of create the experience that, for all intents and purposes, is, is location-based entertainment. You know, when you hear LBE, that's location-based entertainment. It's a growing area. I was sharing with Carl and a few other folks. Um, I have a lot of friends that are going back to these, these, these retail locations that are open now and doing the rides. I think the problem will become, 
is there enough content? So we've got to now figure out part of our solution that we're trying to figure out on the stage is how do you leverage this across the world? You know, you can't really package up what we've got and nobody, you know, we can't get the world to come to us. So, you know, we're really, as a skunk work studio, trying to figure out some of these things and share these lessons out in the, the marketplace. But um, I would also recommend looking into the LDE um, area for work because there's a lot of contract work in that area. You know, these companies, most of the companies, you think they do all the work internally, and even when they say they do, they don't. They need us. So, um, yeah, thank you guys for listening. Appreciate it. Is it brief? I have a, yeah, I have a question here. Uh, so for some of these, like, proof of concept type works with XR, like, uh, is, it, is it a challenge to kind of establish yourself to get paid for those types of things? I think a lot of companies that maybe want to tiptoe there, but for a minimum amount of uh, resources, for example? Has that been kind of uh, a struggle, or has that been easier? Like, how has that experience been, I guess? Uh, that That's a great easy? question, because it kind of comes down to, you know, what, what is the value of your, your time as a developer? You know, we, 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 we want work, we want to get paid, but it takes a lot of time to get that relationship, build that trust, and then get a guarantee of some payment. So the way that we look at it is we really, like to understand a client and we'll we'll spend time and we'll invest let's use an example you know 10 to 20 hours across the board up front just to get to know what the opportunity may be and then engaging the stakeholder on the other side typically it will be um, somebody that's on the outside of that company you know producers or or um, CTOs people at events um, like this or bigger conferences and for us to actually get that work we typically will build some things out to show them that we're capable of doing that. It's tough to swallow because in this day and age, a lot of people take advantage of that model, but it's it's old school. It's kind of what has to happen. It's what we do, and what we'll do is we'll we'll get to the point where we know we, we have a we have a map from A to Z that we know we want to achieve with this client. So we'll start with A. A is that initial you know proving to them that we can do it, building that trust. And then the next step is B, you know, what is that POC? What is that, what is that demo or that prototype? And we'll tie that in literally to being potentially a first milestone. But it's got a book cover, right? It can just be this project for them, but we know beyond it, we're gonna take that work and continue to leverage it for that client. If they don't want to, to do anything else, yeah, we don't own IP, we don't own their brand, but we try to keep the technology inside so that we can leverage that to go to then CDEF. But it does take a fair amount of trust, and you've got to build that trust with clients. And it's pretty easy for us to discover, you know, who is real and who isn't. But I would say probably 50% of the time we're doing work for our future and not to get paid because it just turns out they, they don't end up wanting to go past that first milestone. Mm -hmm. Hope that helps. In the back? Uh, so is there one particular type of engagement that isn't a choice, you just hear them before you say, if we do this one thing, Well, there is, and it's kind of the opening of the kimono and just saying, look, we are an advanced technology group that can deliver to you a solution for this problem you have now. But we have an understanding that, that what they're try usually trying to solve is the first problem, and there are many others, or it's just the beginning of solving that big problem. So letting them understand we've got a bigger picture, and this is the focus, we'll deliver on this, this is the POC, but should you want to move forward, here are the other channels that we're gonna take and the other things we're gonna be able to do. So it really, it, it kind of is a one trick pony in a way. It's, we look at the focus and prioritize the focus on that one problem or that one project or POC, but it's in the context of these companies. And that's why we tend to gravitate towards the bigger companies because they tend to have you know, layers like the onion and they peel a layer off. And as soon as we've solved that problem over with a group at Samsung, they love it, but now it has to be leveraged across some other technology that they're not quite finished with. So in some ways, it can also be a barb and a hook. If you can find those clients and you can get that one gig and you can build the confidence, they're gonna keep coming back to you for more and more and more. And I think that's why Tim and the crew have excelled at being a wider set of domain experts, is because we can conquer a number of different problems within XR. And so that's what excited me about working with, uh, with FS, is that, 
it's, it is kind of a wide gamut of things we do, but it's not that we're a uh, jack of all trades and a pro at none. We have set areas in the width, and we, we can go deep in you know, eight or 10 of those across that width. So thank you again. Thanks for listening. Appreciate it. All right.